Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for your word this morning. And we pray, Lord, that as we meditate on your word, that your Holy Spirit would open your words to us. Speak to us in a new way. Challenge us afresh. Help us to embark on this pilgrimage of faith with you, just like blind Bartimaeus did. And so I pray, Lord, that as we look at this incident from your word, may your Holy Spirit breathe life into these words. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. The theme for our morning's meditation is Faith is the beginning of a pilgrimage. Faith is the beginning of a pilgrimage. In a story is told about a elderly woman who was in New Delhi railway station and um, she was in one of those platforms where numerous trains come and go. And she was somebody who hadn't traveled much. So she was very anxious that she would not get onto the wrong train. And so she got onto this train which was stationary on the platform and asked somebody who was seated there, excuse me sir, is this the train that goes to Nagpur? And the man said, yes ma'am, this is the right train, this is the train that goes to Nagpur. But still she was not comfortable. And so she went across to another gentleman who was seated and asked him the same question. And she showed her ticket that her ticket was to Nagpur and she said, sir, is this the train that goes to Nagpur? And he said, yes, ma'am, you're on the right train. But the woman wasn't convinced. She was still wanting reassurance. But in a few moments, a man came by who was the train conductor. And so she went up to him and, I, and she said, I am going to Nagpur. Is this the right train? And the TT said, Yes, madam, this is the right train. And as soon as she heard the TT saying this is the right train, she immediately was relaxed and she settled down in her seat and was asleep even before the train pulled out. And here we see that this woman believed this TTE because he was the person who had the authority to say whether this train was going to Nagpur or not. In so she received the testimony or the words of the TTE. And that's exactly what faith is all about. Receiving the words of God, believing in what he says. And so we see that faith is necessary and it is the beginning of a pilgrimage. Our spiritual life is a pilgrimage. When we think of a pilgrimage, what comes to our mind is about a specific destination where we want to go. We may want to go to Jerusalem. We may want to go to Bethlehem or we may want to go to Galilee. We want to see the sites where Jesus walked and lived. And so the key point here is that there is a destination. And similarly our lives are also heading towards some destination, whether we like it or not. And faith gives us direction and purpose in the journey we are traveling in. 
And so we see in the readings for today such examples of faith which enables people to begin their journey. In the Gospel reading from St. Mark, we notice that Jesus heals the blind man Bartimaeus as he was leaving Jericho. Jesus and his disciples along with a crowd of fellow pilgrims leave Jericho and they are headed towards Jerusalem. Last week we saw a potential recruit, a rich young ruler who because of his riches did not want to become a disciple. Today we meet another man who is in the other end of the spectrum, a very poor man, a beggar, a blind beggar. And it is he, rather than the rich man, who will end up following Jesus in the way with sight restored, whereas the rich man has gone away blind. You know, when we look at the overall structure of Mark's gospel, it is a drama in three acts. In the first act, all the action takes place in the northern part in Galilee. In Mark chapter 1 all the way to chapter 8, 22, covers the events and the incidents that took place in Galilee. Act 2 is when Jesus and his disciples are on the road from Galilee to Jerusalem. And they record all the action that takes place on the road to Jerusalem. So Mark begins this act in 8.22 where a blind man is healed and concludes this section in chapter 10 verses 46 to 52 which is also the healing of the blind man Bartimaeus. And finally from Acts chapter, uh, from uh, Act 3 begins from chapters 11 to 16, where all the action takes place in Jerusalem, especially the last week before he was crucified. And so today's event is taking place as they were leaving Jericho and heading towards Jerusalem. Let's look at the text from Mark 10, verse 46 onwards. They came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city a blind man Bartimaeus which means son of Timaeus was sitting by the roadside begging so that's the picture I want you to hold on to Mark records for us that the name of the blind man was Bartimaeus again he explains which means son of Timaeus and what was, he sit, what was he doing? He was sitting by the roadside and begging for arms. As Jesus and his entourage were passing by the road, Bartimaeus gets to know that the crowd was following Jesus of Nazareth. And in those days when there were no newspapers or WhatsApp to spread the message, the message would have gone by word of mouth about Jesus. People would have spoken about the signs and wonders and the miracles that he was doing. And so Bartimaeus must have definitely heard that Jesus was a person who was going around healing many people. And so the first picture I want you to hold on to is Bartimaeus sitting by the roadside begging and we see Jesus and his disciples going on that road. Let's move on. Bartimaeus' cry for help and the response of Jesus. Verse 47 says, When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Bartimaeus 
wants to catch the attention of Jesus at all costs. And so he is shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. People are rebuking him, they are telling him to shut up. But instead of keeping quiet, he shouts louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Now Bartimaeus did not want to lose this opportunity of engaging with Jesus because he knew that Jesus had the power to heal. And he believed that Jesus could heal him too. And as soon as Jesus heard his cry, he said to his people, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. The crowd now changes. Till now they were rebuking Bartimaeus. But when Jesus stopped and said, call him, the crowd immediately changed their tone. And they say to the blind man, cheer up. On your feet, he is calling you. And the crowd's sudden and complete change of heart indicates the authority of Jesus. They were now as enthusiastic as they were dismissive before. Earlier on, they were just wanting Bartimaeus not to shout. But now when Jesus has told him, told them to call him, they're excited as well to call him. And Mark says, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. If we carefully look at the picture that Mark is portraying for us, we see that Bartimaeus leaves behind his cloak, which would have been used for begging. The outer cloak, he would have spread it in front of him. Now he has left that and he is with Jesus. So the picture changes, the first scene where he was sitting there with his cloak spread out, people were giving him arms, maybe throwing in a few notes or some coins. And now he's left all that and he runs to Jesus. And Jesus asks him an interesting question. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Rabbi, I want to see. Jesus told him, go, your faith has healed you. Bartimaeus was absolutely clear in his mind about what he wanted from Christ because he had faith in Christ. He believed that Jesus had the ability to heal him and therefore he trusted him completely. He was physically blind. But now his eyes are going to be opened both physically and spiritually. Last week we saw that the rich young man's eyes were blind as seen in the previous passage. But Bartimaeus' spiritual and physical eyes are opened through Jesus. Now imagine if Jesus asks you the same question. What do you want me to do for you? Do you have an answer? Or would we be scratching our heads and telling Jesus, Oh, let me think about it. I'll let you know tomorrow. Bartimaeus was very clear what he wanted from Jesus. And he had absolute faith that Jesus would heal him. And the challenge for us is the same thing. First of all, do we know what we want? 
Is it clear in our mind if Jesus asks us, what do you want me to do for you? Is there something specific that we can tell him, yes Lord, this is what I want you to do for me. And secondly, do we have that faith like Bartimaeus? Yes Lord, I believe that you can do this for me and you will do it for me. Bartimaeus' reply was, Rabbi, I want to see. And Jesus told him, go, your faith has healed you. And we see here that immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. So we see here a completely different picture of Bartimaeus. In the first scene we saw Bartimaeus sitting on the roadside begging. In the second scene we see Bartimaeus leaving his cloak behind, running after Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Rabbi, I want to see. And thirdly, Jesus says, your faith has healed you. And Mark says, immediately he received a sight and followed Jesus along the road. Bartimaeus begins his pilgrimage of faith with Jesus. Followed him along the road. So Bartimaeus is following Jesus towards Jerusalem. So Mark is saying something more than just recording about the incident that Bartimaeus became his follower. But Mark is trying to communicate to us that Bartimaeus was willing to go with Jesus to Jerusalem which was the way of the cross, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. So Mark is giving us here much more than a mere circumstantial note. The two words that are used here, follow and the road, both speak of discipleship. So we see here that Bartimaeus is now set free from his blindness and he represents all those who have found enlightenment and follow the master. And so as the pilgrim group sets off again up the Jerusalem road, they have one additional member. The readers prepare to witness the coming of the son of David to his city and is challenged to join him on the road. And that is the challenge for us this morning. Bartimaeus was a beggar. He was looking for sustenance. He was looking for healing, but he knew who he could trust. He had heard about Jesus. He believed in Jesus. He did not lose the opportunity in asking Jesus for healing. And his spiritual eyes and his physical eyes were opened because he met with Jesus. In last week's sermon, we looked at the rich man who could physically see, who had all the wealth. But in the end, we see that he's spiritually blind. That he cannot see the eternal riches to which God is calling him. And Mark had recorded for us that he went away with a sad face. 
But here is Bartimaeus, leaving his past, entering into this new phase, into this pilgrimage of walking with Jesus. Following Jesus. Discipleship is all about following Jesus. Following Jesus on the road to Jerusalem. Leaving behind our past. Bartimaeus left his cloak, left his money, left everything behind. He was not worried about that. Bartimaeus started afresh. He wanted a new beginning. He followed Jesus along the road. And so we see here, when the blind man and Jesus come together, there is health and hope. And we see that in numerous incidents in the Bible. When a little boy had a few loaves and fishes and came to Jesus, there was sufficiency, even abundance. Or when we see a thirsty woman in an ancient well and she comes to Jesus and there were streams of living water flowing out of human hearts. And then we see a rugged fisherman, a broken net and Jesus. And then there is discipleship and a story to tell. Whenever a human need and a sincere faith and the master meet, then there is transformation and consecration. If we bring our lives weak and insufficient to the master, to Jesus, he will remake us. And that is a challenge for us this morning. Are we willing to come to Jesus with all our weaknesses, with all our shortcomings, with all our blindness? And when we come into his presence to cry out to him, I want to see, I want to be healed, I want to follow you. Do we have that faith? that Jesus will heal us, will watch over us, will transform us, will consecrate us, and will use us as his disciples. Jesus calls us this morning to begin this pilgrimage of faith. If you've never believed in the Lord Jesus, the challenge for us is to begin today to leave behind our past. God is not interested in our past. Our past is forgiven. Our past is healed. God wants you to follow him on the road, on to Jerusalem. And we see that quite often in the Gospels. Take up your cross and follow me daily. And so like blind Bartimaeus, we are called to follow Jesus. Our blind spiritual eyes will be opened and we will become his followers. He will walk with us. We begin this journey of faith by trusting in Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. If we have not begun this journey till now, may we begin that journey today by inviting Jesus to be with us and to commit ourselves to walk with him on the road to Jerusalem. May God, the Holy Spirit, empower us, strengthen us, and sustain us as we take the decision to be his followers. May God bless each one of you. Let us pray. Father, we still our hearts before you this morning and we give you thanks.
for Bartimaeus. Thank you that he left behind his past and followed you on the road. Thank you for his faith. Thank you for his pilgrimage with you. And Lord, even as we begin this pilgrimage with you, help us to trust you completely and to walk after you on the road to Jerusalem. Watch over us, direct our paths, and draw us all closer to you. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.